Hey, welcome back to another example on force components. So in this example, we have this structural system drawn right here, and we have this member ABC, and that member ABC is subject to this Q force that's acting downward here at point A. And it is being supported by this member BD. So you can kind of see that if, if BD, if this member was just not existent, then this force Q would cause this member ABC to sort of rotate to the right like that. But because this member is here, this member ABC stays where it's at. Now, member BD exerts a force P onto member ABC. So just, just like that. And knowing that P has a horizontal component of 400 newtons, we need to determine two things. The first is the magnitude of that force P, and the second is the vertical component of P. And the vertical component is going to be the P sub Y vector, the vertical component of this force. So to sort of start off, we know that BD exerts a force P onto member ABC. So we know the line of action of that force P is going to be along this BD line. And because this force Q is pulling downwards and this ABC member is staying stationary, we know that this BD member is pushing against ABC in order to keep that ABC member from rotating like this. So that's very important because that tells us the direction of P. P is acting this way, and it's not acting this way, right? If it was acting this way, we could see that it's pulling member ABC. And so member ABC would be moving to the right. But because it's keeping member ABC from rotating to the right, we know that P is acting in this direction along line BD. And the reason that's important is because when we start drawing the free body diagram of the system, or particularly of force P, we have to orient force P in a specific direction. So if member BD is acting this way, then we know force P is going to act this way. So down here, what I could do is I could draw a free body diagram of force P. So this is, this is force P. Now, the problem states that P has a horizontal component of 400 newtons. So in other words, force P, this P force that I've drawn right here, its horizontal component, P sub X, is going to be acting to the left. And it's going to go something like this. So this is going to be P sub X, and this is going to have a value of 400 newtons. Now, to finish off this diagram, we also have the Y component of this force P that goes downward to meet the tip of P, and this is what I'm going to call P sub Y. So let's draw in one more thing. So I'm actually going to move this uh, down here a little bit so it's not crowded and, and jammed against the diagram that we drew up at the beginning of the problem. But anyway, we want to complete this diagram by adding in some of these angles. So we know that BD acts at a 35 degree angle from this vertical line. So in other words, if this is 35 degrees, we know that this angle right here is 35 degrees. So I can go ahead and just draw that in. I can say that this is 35 degrees. And this makes a right triangle. So this is a right triangle. The hypotenuse is this P force. And then we have the sides of the triangle PX and PY. And now this simply becomes a geometry problem or a trigonometry problem. So looking back, uh, the first part of the question was we need to figure out what the magnitude of P is. And the magnitude of P is just the side of the hypotenuse. And we can do that by using this angle right here, this 35 degrees. And I could say that, well, if you had sine of that angle, which is 35 degrees, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, right? So the opposite side to this angle is this side of the triangle right here, and that has a value of 400 newtons. So this is going to be equal to P of X, which is the magnitude of P of X, over the magnitude of P. Now, our unknown in this equation is this P force right here, but we already know P of X. That is 400 newtons. So I can say that P of X is 400 newtons, and then that's going to be divided by 
P, and that's what we're trying to figure out, the magnitude of P. So now I can rewrite this equation a little bit more, and I could say that P is equal to 400 newtons divided by the sine of 35 degrees. Right. The only thing I did was I multiplied both sides by P to get that onto the left side, and then I divided by sine of 35 to get that on the right side. So now it's as simple as plugging this into our calculator, and when we do that, our P value, our magnitude for P, is about 697.4 newtons. Okay, great. So that solves the first part of the question. So that is part A. Let's go ahead and move on to part B, the vertical component of P, which is P sub Y. Now, back in our diagram that we've drawn here, P sub Y is this side of the triangle. And so just like we did up here, we can also use trigonometry to figure out what P sub Y is. Now, P sub Y, you can actually figure out two different ways, and I'll show you both ways, and they will both give you the same exact answer. So the first way is we can use tangent. So if I said tangent of 35 degrees, well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. And so tangent of 35 degrees is the magnitude of P of X over the magnitude of P of Y. And again, P of Y is our unknown, and we already know P of X, that's the 400 newtons here. And so I could rewrite this equation as P of Y is equal to P of X divided by the tangent of 35 degrees. Now, filling in for P of X, that's 400 newtons divided by the tangent of 35. And if I solve this out, we get a value of P of Y is equal to about 571.3 newtons. So that is our P of Y value. Now, the second way you can solve this is using cosine. So again, looking at this triangle, if we took the cosine of 35 degrees, well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and the adjacent is this P of Y. The hypotenuse is P, and we figured out what P was in the previous part. It's the 697.4 newtons. Cosine of 35 degrees is equal to, again, P of Y, the adjacent side, over the hypotenuse, which is just P. And if I rewrite this in terms of P of Y, this is equal to P times cosine of 35 degrees. Now, if I just substitute P here for this P value there, I get an equation that looks like this. 697.4 newtons times the cosine of 35 degrees. Now, if I solve this out for P of Y, well, surprise, surprise, we get a P of Y equal to 571.3 newtons. And that is the same value that we got up here using tangent. And so, again, all of these problems require you to kind of dig into your geometry and trigonometry skills, be able to draw the free body diagram or the diagram of that force appropriately, and then use your trigonometric skills to figure out what these components are. So there we go. The magnitude of P is 697. And the vertical component piece of Y has a value of 571.3 newtons.